One of the most exciting features of Excel is its capacity for you to write formulas to do calculations on your data. We want to talk a little bit about calculations. Formulas start with an equal sign in Excel. And then to the right of the equal sign, you're going to use a variety of components, operators, variables, and constants to write your formulas. In whole, this is referred to as an expression, and of course, it's going to result in a calculation. So, for example, if I have 5 plus 5, that is going to equal 10. 10 is my result. The formula consists of a constant, another constant, and an operator. I'll give you another example. Let's take 3 plus 2, and I'm going to put that inside of parentheses, times 8. Now the reason I put this inside of parentheses, just like they have in our example here, is because we want to discuss a little bit about order of operations. We've got a topic about that coming up, but I want to show you that anything inside of parentheses happens first in Microsoft Excel formula. So that's going to happen first. That results in 3 plus 2, 5, times 8. 5 times 8 equals. Okay, so you have your um, result. You've got your equal sign, and then you've got your formula. When working with formulas in Excel, you're going to spend the majority of your time in what is called the formula bar text box. This area right here below the ribbon. That's where you write your formulas, and you can write them manually. And of course, as we discussed, they're going to start with an equal sign, and that indicates to Excel I'm about to write a formula. You could just start typing an equal sign there and then write your formula. But you also have a variety of functions that are built into Microsoft Excel to aid you in creating a formula. So for instance, I could sit here and manually say equal A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4, and that could go on and on if I've got a whole column of numbers I want to add. Or I could insert a function that would make this simpler for me. So in this case, I would want to sum some numbers, A1 through, let's say, A300. Can you imagine me sitting here typing 300 individual cell references there? So you're going to learn a little bit about those functions and how they can save you time, but that's what the function button does for you. It brings up a list of all of these functions that you can use rather than having to manually type your formulas. And then finally, you need to be focused on what is called the name box. Now, when we were discussing the parts of the screen, we talked about the name box briefly. That shows you the cell that you're currently sitting in or the range of cells that you currently have selected. That's what the name box does uh, for the most part. But you can also create what is called a range name and give a range of cells, let's say A1 through A300 here, if that is, let's say, my sales data, I could name that range sales. So over here in my name box, if I highlighted A1 through A300, I would normally see in my name box A1 through A300. Or if I've named that something friendly like sales, I would see the word sales in the name box rather than the range name. Uh, so that is the name box the insert function area, and the formula bar text box. One other thing I'll mention, if you start typing a formula in this formula bar text box and you hit this X, that will cancel what you started to type. Once you hit this check mark, that accepts what you've entered and it assumes you're done with your formula. Now I want to talk about the elements of a formula. I've shown you a little bit about this, but I want to go through it again. All Excel formulas begin with an equal sign. Okay, that's the starting point for all formulas. 
Then you've got cell references, operators, okay, remember that's an operator, and you've got hard-coded constants. If I put in here 0.25, that's a hard-coded value or a constant. It's not going to change. Alternatively, you have what are called functions. Instead of you writing out all of the individual references, you can use functions, and there are hundreds of them in Excel. In this case, again, you start with the equal sign, but the function name always comes next. And then, inside of parentheses, following the function name, you put whatever the required arguments are for that particular function, and they vary. So in the case of the sum function, it wants to know what cells do you want me to sum. In this case, B1 through B10. Colon means through. Okay? So I'm saying, please sum B1 through B10. If I use a more complex function, it may require many arguments. For instance, the if function requires several arguments. The test, what you want to happen if that test is true, and then what you want to happen if that test is false. So there are three arguments required for the if function. On this screen, I'm showing you the common mathematical operators utilized in Excel 2013. Some of them probably look familiar to you just from your own math classes growing up. Plus sign for adding, a dash for subtraction, or minus sign. But then, not everybody is comfortable with an asterisk as multiplication. You know, growing up, we did 5 times 5 equals 25. Well, that's not correct in Excel. In Excel, it would be an asterisk. And of course, all formulas in Excel start with an equal sign. Then the forward slash is your division. Okay, so if I want to divide two numbers, equal 5 divided by 5, that's how I would write that. And then you have two uh, other components not used as frequently. The exponent is a little caret and then the capacity to group things. And I already mentioned this, but whenever you see parentheses, you're basically telling Excel to uh, treat everything inside of those parentheses as a group. So again, if I say equal 5 plus 5 times 8, I'm saying please do this first, which will get us a 10 and then take that result and multiply it by 8. So we'll get our 80. Microsoft Excel has an order of operations. As I mentioned, anything inside of parentheses is considered a group, and that is going to take highest precedence in order of operations. So when it's trying to figure out what order you would like the calculations to occur, it's going to look at parentheses first. The second highest any exponents, and then the third is going to be division and multiplication, and addition and subtraction will take the lowest precedence. Now, this brings up a question. If I have it do everything inside of parentheses first, then exponents, and then it's supposed to do multiplication and division, how, do, how's it, how does it decide which between division and multiplication takes higher precedence. Well, in this case, they're equal. So what it does is it reads left to right. The division would happen first and then the multiplication. It's just going to read the formula left to right. Things of equal importance are going to happen in that order. I'm going to open up a file. Click on File, Open, and under my documents in the folder called performing calculations I'm going to open up new product income now what we have here is our income based on product backpacks tents with the screen room knee pads mountain bikes 
We also have a tax rate up here. And the management of My Footprint Sports has planned to introduce four new products. And what we need to determine is if the income from these products um, is going to be substantial. We're going to estimate our sales data, our expenses, our taxes, and figure out what our profit is going to be after taxes. Okay, so notice we have our raw data that has been entered, but we have no computations, no formulas. The first formula is for total income. Our income for our four products is there, and we need to write a formula. I'm going to start my formula with an equal sign. Now I could type in B6, but it's quicker if I just take my mouse and click, it will type the B6 for me. And then a plus, click on B7, plus B8, plus B9. You can see my formula. As soon as I press enter to accept that, I see the results. Notice you see the formula in the formula bar. You see the results down in the cell. If I change any of these values, let's change this to something dramatic like 30,000. As soon as I make the change, my formula automatically updates. I'm going to go up here on my quick toolbar and undo that. Okay, so my total income is 22,162. My expenses are hard coded as a value of 4,585. My income, of course, would be my income minus my expenses. So I need a formula there. Start with the equal sign. Click on B10. Subtract. Click on B11. Press Enter. And there is my net income. Now, if I want to figure out my taxes, I get taxed at 8% of my income. So I'm going to write a formula equal B12 times E5, my tax rate. And there's my taxes. And so my profit after taxes would be my net income minus my taxes equal net income minus taxes. And so our total profit is $16,170.84. Again, if you make any change in this scenario, all of your formulas are going to update. So it, let's go back up to Backpack and change it to 30000 And you'll notice everything updates immediately. And we have a much larger profit, of course, at that point. OK, I'm going to hit Undo again. And now I'm going to save this under a new name. So I go to File, Save As. And I'll call it New Product Income Completed. When I'm done, File Close.